All right, we started with adding fractions, which would be like this, 1 over a plus 1 over 7a, for instance. Can I add them together without a common denominator? No, but I can make a common denominator pretty easy. What does the one on the left need to make it common with the one on the right? So I just go like this, and I multiply. And why is that okay? Because that thing in the parentheses is equal to what? 1. All right, now, can I add them together now? Yes, but you don't actually add the bottom. You just add the top. So the final answer here would be 7 plus 1 is 8 over 7a plus 7a is 14a, right? No. What can't I do? I can't add the bottom. So instead, the bottom is just 7a. And then, of course, they got significantly harder when we were talking about factoring things like x squared plus 2x plus 1 all over uh, x plus 1. And then I'm adding that to, for instance, uh, 3 over... Uh, let me think about this. Let's go with x minus 1. And then here I would ask you, do they have a common denominator? No. Now, could I factor the top? Yes, I could. And it would become x plus 1 and x plus 1. All over x plus 1. Coincidence? I think not. 3 over x minus 1. And then, can I cancel stuff while it's still in the middle of a problem? Yes. In this little self-contained area right here, I can do some canceling. Like, cancel, cancel. And when they cancel, do they just disappear? No, they re replaced with what's? 1's. So now I have x plus 1 over 1 plus 3 over x minus 1. Now I ask you, this x minus 1 compared to this 1, are they the same thing? No. So now I could try to do this the complicated way, or I could do it the easy way. When the cop asks you, always choose the easy way. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Take the easy way. Okay, I'm going to do this by multiplying this by what? X minus 1. And now look, do they have the same denominator now? All right. As long as you can get it so they have the same denominator, you're good. All right, now, but wait a minute. Didn't we just have an x plus 1 on the top and the bottom? Yeah, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted a common denominator. Now this is the same as that. So now it can actually be all go together. Now, do I have to multiply out that whole top? Nope. I can leave it as x minus 1, x plus 1, plus 3, all over the denominator now is x minus 1. But here's the thing. People think we can cancel that. You cannot. Because of this little add here, you can't cancel over addition. That's a little saying I've heard before, and I've reminded you of this situation. A plus 3 over A. Can I cancel the A's and just say the answer is 3? No. Just like if I had 6 and 6. 6 plus 3 is 9 over 6. Is that the same thing as 3? No, it's not. Okay, and even if I, do you have to cancel things? Yes, you have to cancel things when you can cancel things. Yep. You have, if, if at best, you might have an answer that's not reduced all the way like this. Let's say you tried to leave this as your final answer on the test. Uh, and then and an x minus 1. If I left it like that, I'd lose partial credit. Why? I didn't reduce it all the way by canceling, so I should have canceled those. All right. Okay, enough of me reminding you how to do stuff. Let's actually have you do one on your iPad. Would you try this one for me, please? X plus 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. And all of that is being timesed by... No, let's just keep it simple. Let's just do that one. Figure out the answer to this one first. X plus 1 over X squared plus 3X plus 2. All right. I hope you notice the bottom factored. And then the top and the bottom have something in common. It ends up being X plus 1 over X plus 1 times X plus 2. Is that correct? And then when this cancels, the answer is just X plus true. True or false? Uh, false. False. One over x plus two. Because when they canceled, they left ones behind. There we go. One over x plus two. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. 
Who can rewrite this with a negative exponent? Yes? It, it flip it. So say what to write. Uh, Wait, the whole thing or the answer? Write that um, with a negative exponent. Eh, thank you for trying. You got warm. Yes? You're close, but not right. What's wrong with what I wrote? Yes, Logan? You got it. Now, otherwise, just the negative 2. Okay, but what I wrote is not what you did. Anyway. Well, okay. Now you understand what he meant? Okay, good. All right, moving on. Uh, I have a problem for you that's different. 1 over 2 over 3 over 4. What is going on here? You're dividing two fractions. And do you remember what to do? We started at the beginning of the year with this. The be, not the beginning of the year, beginning of this little mini unit. You flip and multiply. So do both of them get flipped? No. The first one gets left alone. The second one, instead of a divide, I can say times. And instead of, I can't use 3 fourths then, because divided by 3 fourths and times 3 fourths are obviously different. So if I'm going to change it from divided by 3 fourths, I've got to times by 4 thirds. Do you get what just happened there? I flip and multiply. Final answer, 4 over 6. But could I leave it that way? No, you've got to reduce it all the way. Could I rewrite this as 2 times 2 over 2 times 3? Yeah, that would be kind of smart because then 2 is canceled and the answer is 2 thirds. I really wish that they'd teach the reducing fractions that way instead of this like thing where people have you know, 4, 6, and they'll go, cancel, cancel, and then what is it? Well. Really what's happening is you break this 4 into 2 times 2, break your 6 into 2 times 3, and then let the 2's cancel. Then they, you'd be better prepared for what we're doing nowadays. Instead of just what goes into both 4 and 6, 2 does. 2 goes in here how many times? 2. 2 goes in here how many times? 3. And that's nice, but it doesn't teach you how to cancel things. All right. So what are we doing for today? You're going to have a lot of problems like this. X squared plus... Uh, 3x plus, let's say, what's another way to do this? Let's make this 8x plus 7 over 1 over x plus 8. All right, do you get how there's a fraction in a fraction? Do you... Understand that you don't want to have fractions in fractions. You want to change them to multiply problems. That when, what this really is right here is a big divide sign. And I want to change it to a multiply sign. So I'm going to say, first of all, factor the top. x plus 7, x plus 1, over... Nope, I can't change it to divided by... I'm still in this problem. Okay, all I did was factor the top. That's all I did. Now I got to change from a divide sign to a multiply by and then flip this over. So this has to get flipped and go right there. So that's going to be x plus 8 over 1. Do you have to have a common denominator to multiply things? No, you do not. So therefore, your answer is just, all of this is over 1, x plus 7, x plus 1, x plus 8. You have to do three times, like x times That is the answer. Done. Do not have to Where multiply it all the way out. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Now, here's a harder kind that we did yesterday, but I need to make sure you're good at it. 1 over 7a plus uh, 3a over... Um, 8AB. Can I add them without a common denominator? No, I need a common denominator. So what you ask yourself is, what does this one have that he doesn't have? It has a B. I need a B. If I'm going to get a B over here, I've got to put a B on the top and a B on the bottom. And it's a multiply. Now, ask yourself, am I closer? Yeah, but it's still not right. Aren't, they aren't the same yet. Well, what does this guy have that this guy doesn't have? An 8. So we're going to put an 8 on each. Now you ask yourself, are they the same denominators yet? No, but they're close. Now what do I do? 
Nope. On the other side, I need something over here now. Times seven. So I'm going to times by seven and times by seven. Now do you get that the top and or sorry, the bottoms are the same. The denominators are the same. All right. So final answer then would be eight b plus twenty one a all over fifty six a b. Now some people will say, why can't you cancel the a? Why can't I cancel that a? Because there's an addition there. Just like you can't cancel these x's, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And why? I can show you with numbers. 5 plus, oh, wait a minute, 1 plus 5 over 5, you would not be able to cancel those 5's, would you? Okay, so here's one I want you to try. 3 over 6a equals, no, plus, sorry, uh, m over 2ab. My first piece of advice is to break the 6 into as small a parts as you can. That's like factoring it, right? We've been factoring everything we have. So factor the 6. What does the 6 break into? A 2 times a 3. And what you'll notice is, oh, they do have a 2 in common. Do you get how they do have a 2 in common? They both have a 2. Well, if you do it the other way, you'll have a lot more reducing to do at the end. So do it this way, and you won't have to do as much reducing. So what does the one on the right have? It makes me think of the, uh, of the movie Snow White. She stands there in front of the mirror and says, Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? And then she basically says, yeah, Snow White's better than you are. And then she goes crazy. And then what does she say? What does she have that I don't have? Well, it's kind of like that. So what does this one have that this one doesn't have? A B. So I'm going to put a B here and here. OK, now, what does this one have that this one doesn't have? Nothing. So let's go the other way. Let's say from this guy's perspective, what does this one have that he doesn't? A three. Now, would you agree they have a common denominator now? If All right. That's fine. I'm not opposed to other ideas. All I'm saying is that when it's all said and done, I want to make sure that I have got it so it's as simple as possible so I don't have as much canceling to do at the end. All right, so now I'm going to rewrite this bottom as 3 times 2 times A times B. And now I want to ask you an important question. Now can I cancel? I'm hearing some people say yes and some people say no. Yes, we can. Oh, that's Obama's theme song. It's not that. No. What do you think? Yep. Yeah. Yes, but you don't want to add extra dividing into your problems. It would work, but I'm not going to recommend that you ever divide in the middle of a problem where you don't have to. Because dividing is hard. Multiplying is easy. Okay. I believe you can do it. I, what I, I want see right now. I need to focus you on this, and you're trying to make me go back a step. And I, I would go back a step with you in a minute, but right now I want to focus on this. So on this one, can I cancel or not? This comes down to can or can't you cancel? And still I have half the class think I can and half the class thinks I can't. What's different about this than the last time is that I've got a 3 here and here and here. So yes, I can cancel if there's one in each spot. All right. If you did not reduce this, it would not have gotten full credit. So yes, you would have lost a half a point for not reducing. Half the credit to A, B. And now here, though, again, some kids think, well, so you're saying we can always cancel that kind? No. Here you cannot cancel. Why? Because there isn't one in each of them. There has to be one in every term. So there'd have to be one by the M there. So that cancel cannot work. So I'm going to get it out of there 
Here, run away from the canceling. Oh, my alignment's gotten horribly off again. There is my final answer in blue. B plus M over 2AB. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Now, we have a bunch of problems today uh, that have the divide. You know, the first seven problems are actually really easy because you just drop, switch, flip, which is, you know, if you have this, uh, X plus 3, X minus 2 over X plus 7. And then I have that divided by... Uh, let's make it x plus 7 and x plus 3 and x minus 5. Okay, that's a weird looking 5. My alignment's off. Got to forgive me. There we go. Okay, so now if I do the drop switch flip thing, notice the first one does not flip. This one stays exactly the same. So I'm just going to copy it and bring it down. Control D. And now I'm bringing it down. See, it's exactly the same. And now instead of dividing, I'm going to change it to what? Excellent. Instead of dividing, I'm not going to change it to divide by. Instead of dividing, I'm changing it to multiply. Okay, and now I'm going to flip the other part. This part needs to get flipped. Uh, alignment. Okay, and then the x plus 7 goes on top. And on the bottom, I have x plus 3 and x minus 5. Okay, now I can do some canceling. Don't do canceling when it was a divide problem. Now that it's a big multiply problem, now I can look for stuff to cancel. See how that and that are the same? I can cancel. That x plus 7 chunk and that x plus 7 chunk can cancel. And now this x plus 3 and this x plus 3 can cancel. How many of you knew it was x minus 2 over x plus minus 5? All right, good. Most of you. All right, now we get, yes, question. That one? Yeah, and the one in the middle of red. Uh, if it was like 3B plus 6M, then like 9, then 2, then J, then C, because it's inside. Okay, okay. So you said 3B plus 6M over 9 uh, times A times B or something. Is that basically the essence of what you're asking? Okay, good question. Can I do some canceling here or not? Yes, and here's why. This 6 is really got a 3 times 2 in it. Right? And this 9 has really got a 3 times 3 in it. And now can you see I got a 3 in each? That's what you need to do. You need to factor everything down. We keep saying that. You want to factor everything down so that you can see what it's made of. So I got a 3 here, a 3 here, and a 3 here. So I can cancel them. That's a good question. All right. So what's the... You remember yesterday I had one I called the Hitler problem because you had to defeat Hitler because it was extremely difficult and scary and... And only a few of you did. You but you now we have a 1 over x plus a all over 3 over b minus x. If I had to answer this one, this would be the Hitler problem of the day. Wow. Gentlemen, problem on board. Focus. All right. Why is it so hard? Because it's got two parts to it. You've got to do an add with not common denominators, so you've got to make them common. Then you've got to do a subtract with not common denominators. And then, in the middle of the whole thing, it's a great big divide problem, which means you're going to have to flip and multiply when you're all done. Give it a shot. I'm guessing only three of you get it right. See if you can be one of the three. I'll give you a hint on starting. Make this have a denominator even if it's a simple one. And then it's easier to get common denominators. Fractions play nice with other fractions. Okay, here's what you should have done. You should have said, what does this guy have that I don't have? Doesn't have you don't have an x. x and an x. Now do they have the same common denominator? Yes, they do. So now I can say 1 plus ax. The one with the x all over x. You get that? On the bottom. What does this guy have that I don't have? A b and a b. And now I have 3 minus xb all over b. 3 minus xb all over b. Okay. You know what just happened there?
Okay, that's a big divide problem still. And now I'm going to change it from a big bracket. You know what? I just had a genius idea. The I, excuse me, don't interrupt. The I, uh, not the I, the board here, the smart board, it has an extend page where you can go down. It should have an extend page where you can go to the right. That would be really nice. No, not the left. That's completely wrong. Only to the right. I'm just kidding. We generally read from left to right, so it would obviously probably come in more often when we add more space to the right, but I can't do it. All right. Ooh. Ooh, that's a very intriguing idea. Okay, so how can I add? I can add a page. Clearly, I can just say plus a page because if my alignment's horribly off. Um, then you go to view. Okay, I'm not even going to try touching it because the alignment's so far off. View. Where is it? Where is it? Help me. I know, you can do a split screen. I don't know how. Okay, I'm going to stop wasting time with that. But it would be awesome if there was an extend page to the right button. All right, I'm going to just instead go down. And here's what I'd have. I'm going to do it in red now. 1 plus AX over X. And instead of dividing, I'm going to change it to times. And by changing it to times, that means I have to flip it. B over 3 minus XB. And now it's a multiply problem. That's a big, weird multiply sign. And now I can actually finish by just leaving it the way I have it right here. Except I've got to make sure I have parentheses around stuff. There's parentheses in these fractions. That's probably the one of the most misunderstood things about big fractions is they have parentheses. Whether you can see them or not, there's parentheses around that. It's a grouping symbol. That's what a fraction bar is listed under, under math concepts. A fraction bar is called a grouping symbol, just like parentheses are. Don't interrupt me, please. This is an important thing I'm telling you. You may not process it right now, but it's a really important thing. A fraction bar is a grouping symbol, just like a parenthesis. OK, anyway, now the final answer would be b times 1 plus ax over x times 3 minus xb. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Sweet. That's at least half the class. Nice way to be in the top half of the class. Oh, oh, some people think we can cancel some stuff. Let's see. What? Now, go ahead. Could you multiply it out? Sure. Do you have to multiply it out? No. Would it help at all to multiply it out? Not really. I would say it was okay if you had multiplied it out, but do you get that you run the risk of screwing up the multiplication if you do multiply it out? Whereas I won't have that chance of making that mistake. You could, for instance, go b times the 1 and then forget to do the b times the ax. Know what I mean? You could make a mistake in going further, and you don't have to. All right, so let's uh, take a little practice quiz here and see how you do. I'm going to give you three little problems, just three. There they are. I want these on a, on a separate sheet, like make a blank page or a new document, I mean. Make a completely new document. I don't want this mushed in with all your other notes and stuff. Get me a new document up on the screen. This may be emailed to me when you're done or put into a Dropbox, font, something like that. So make it its own document, please. It's not that hard. You do not have to copy the original problems. All you need to do is start, for instance, on number one by factoring it all the way. You need to factor. It's a big part of this little quiz that's coming up tomorrow. It's got to be able to factor stuff. Then do any canceling that you can, and then write the answer. Number one is really easy once you realize that there's some factoring you can do. All right. So give you give it your best shot. Number three is tough. I'm going to pause while you work on that for a minute. Clarifying question, is a little dash thing in number two a divide? Yes, that is a divide. So if I were you, I wouldn't want to divide. I'd want to change it, but it is a divide to start with. All right, so here's the answers for it. And you're grading somebody else's paper here. Number one, here's how you do it. I don't want to just say the answers. I wanted you to see how to do it. You should factor this into x plus 1 and x minus 1. Oh, the alignment is driving me crazy. And then that can cancel that. And then some people forget there's a 1 on top, but there is. So the answer is 1 over x minus 1. Raise your hand if you don't have to have parentheses down there. Raise your hand if your person was right. OK, good. Uh, 
Yes. Okay, moving on to this one. All right, my first thought is I'd really rather factor everything first and see if stuff will cancel. So on this one, I'm going to replace that with an x plus 1 and an x minus 1. Do I have to cancel right now? No, but it's smart because it makes my problem easier. Okay, on the top over here, I would make that into x plus 1 and x minus 4 all over 2. Nothing can cancel there, though. Okay, now I'm going to change this divide problem into a multiply problem. So the left side stays the same. x minus 4 over x plus 1. The right side changes from a divide into a times. And then over here, I'm going to flip this one. 2 over x plus 1, x minus 4. Now, is there anything can, that can cancel? Why can I cancel again all of a sudden? Because it's a multiply problem now. It's a new multiply problem. See, we just freshly made this multiply, and that and that can cancel. All right. When it's all said and done, don't interrupt, please. When it's all said and done, the answer is 2 over, and I'd accept either x plus 1, x plus 1, or x plus 1 quantity squared is even better, but they can have another x plus 1 next to it instead. That is the answer. If they don't have that answer, it is wrong. No partial credit. It's either right or wrong. I know that's a tough one. Did anybody's person who they're grading get this one right? All right, there's like four of you. What was the part? I, I'm guessing you forgot to do this cancel. All right, moving on. This one. On the top, first of all, make it be a fraction. Okay, so this is over one. And now, have they got a common denominator? No. To make it have a common denominator, I need to multiply this one by a 2 on the top and on the bottom. And I would have x over 2 minus 6 over 2. Now they have a common denominator. So it's going to be x minus 6 over 2. Next, on the bottom, I'm going to make this have a denominator. Then I'm going to make it a common denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom by x. And now I'm going to have 2x. Oh, wait, over x, plus 1 over x, and now do they have a common denominator? Yes, so I can add them. 2x plus 1 all over x. And now this is still a great big divide problem. So now i got to take this and divide by this. So I really don't want to divide, I want to times. x minus 6 over 2 times, flip that one, x over 2x plus 1. Anything cancel? Nope. Final answer is exactly that, and I, I just rewrite it as this, x, x minus 6, over 2, 2x plus 1. Could they multiply it out? Yes, and if they did, it would be x squared minus 6x over uh, 2 times 2x is 4x, and 2 times the 1 is plus 2. That's an okay answer, or that's an okay answer, or even that is an okay answer. Any of those three are correct. All right, get it back to the owner with a score out of three on it. On this one, I honestly would have been proud with a two out of three. How many of you in here got a three? I want to see the hands. Nice. One, two, three, four, five of you. Very impressive. Okay, six, I guess. Good job. Who got a two out of three? Also still very hard to get. All right, nice job. That's the top half of the class. Now, if you struggled with this, does this mean you're doomed tomorrow? No, but it means you ought to spend extra time and energy practicing on your homework for today. Your homework's there. The answers are there. If you do it and you don't understand it, it's especially important to look through the teacher's work and see how it worked. Don't just go, oh, I guess the answer is x over 7. Look at how they did it. And you can always come in in the morning if you want extra help. All right, we are taking a quiz on this, but it's not super long or worth a lot of points. So don't worry, it's not going like, to crash your grade right at the end of the, of the year here. Uh, it could drop your grade a little bit, but it's not going to be a massive hit if you are not having success with these. Yes, ma'am.